Hercules was the offspring of Zeus and Alcmena. As Hera harbored hostility towards Zeus' children from mortal mothers, she waged war on Hercules from his birth. Anticipating Hera's animosity, Alcmena abandoned the child on a hill, fearing that life would be a cruel fate for him. However, Athena observed a radiant light from the heavens and descended to earth to investigate. Discovering Alcmena's child, Athena perceived his uniqueness and, as the patroness of heroes, transported him to Mount Olympus for upbringing. One day, Athena entrusted the infant to Hera for nursing, but the child bit so fiercely that Hera recoiled, causing the milk to scatter across the sky, forming what we now know as the Milky Way. Upon imbibing the divine milk, the infant grew stronger and more divine-like. Several months later, Athena reunited the child with his mother Alcmena. Alcmena christened the child Hercules, signifying the pride of Hera in Greek, in an effort to placate Hera. However, he is more commonly recognized by his Roman name, Hercules. Nevertheless, Hera remained unappeased. She dispatched two serpents to annihilate Hercules, who was nestled in his cradle, yet the resourceful infant strangled the serpents with his own hands. Subsequently, Hera left Hercules undisturbed for a period. Upon reaching maturity, Hercules wed Megara, the daughter of King Creon and the King of Thebes. After several years, Hera, resenting Hercules' prosperity, drove him to madness, so intense that he slew his own children. Upon regaining his senses, he beseeched for a means of atonement. The gods decreed that he could only achieve redemption by completing twelve insurmountable tasks. The initial task entailed combating the Nemean lion. A fearsome lion terrorized the Nemea Valley. Eurystheus, the king of the land and the overseer of the twelve tasks, as well as Hercules' staunch adversary, tasked Hercules with procuring the beast's skin. Employing his club and arrows to no avail, Hercules throttled the lion with his bare hands. Returning with the lion's carcass draped over his shoulders, Hercules intimidated Eurystheus to the extent that he demanded future proof of task completion to occur outside the city. His subsequent endeavor was to vanquish the Hydra. This monstrous creature ravaged the region of Argos, dwelling in a swamp. The Hydra boasted nine heads, with the middle one being immortal. Despite severing its heads with his club, two new ones sprouted in place of each severed head. Eventually, Hercules cauterized the Hydra's necks and interred the immortal head beneath a colossal boulder. Another labor involved cleansing the Augean stables. Augeus, the king of Elis, possessed a herd of 3,000 cattle, and their stables had remained uncleansed for three decades. Hercules diverted two nearby rivers, channeling their waters through the stables and meticulously purging them in a single day. Discover the enchanting world of myths. Click subscribe to join our mythology channel on YouTube. Unearth ancient legends, unravel mysteries, and embark on epic journeys through the realms of mythology. Don't miss out on a single tale, subscribe now and let the myths come alive on your screen. Chronicles of the Past His subsequent task was more intricate. Admeta, the daughter of Eurystheus, harbored an ardent desire for the prized belt of the Amazon Queen. Consequently, Eurystheus commissioned Hercules to retrieve it. The Amazons constituted a nation of formidable women, renowned for their martial prowess and prosperous cities. They adhered to a custom of rearing solely females, banishing or executing male offspring. Accompanied by numerous volunteers, Hercules embarked on an expedition fraught with various perils until he finally reached Amazon territory. Queen Hippolyta cordially received him and consented to relinquish her belt. However, Hera, dissatisfied with the ease of the task, assumed the guise of an Amazon and persuaded the others that intruders were abducting their queen. They promptly armed themselves and descended upon the vessel in force. Misinterpreting the situation, Hercules, believing Hippolyta had betrayed him, slew her and appropriated the belt. Another labor entailed procuring the cattle of Geryon, a monstrous being with three bodies inhabiting the island of Erythia near Spain, under the rule of King Geryon. After traversing various lands, Hercules arrived at the border between Libya and Europe, where he erected the mountains of Calpe and Abilu as monuments to his journey, forming the Strait of Gibraltar, 
renowned as the Pillars of Hercules. The cattle were guarded by the giant Eurytion and his two-headed dog, yet Hercules vanquished the giant and his canine companion, retrieving the cattle for Eurystheus. The most arduous task involved acquiring the golden apples of the Hesperides, as Hercules was clueless about their location. These apples, bestowed upon Hera by the earth goddess on her wedding day, were entrusted to the daughters of Hesperus, safeguarded by a vigilant dragon. Following numerous trials, Hercules arrived at Mount Atlas in Africa. Atlas, one of the titans who opposed the gods, bore the punishment of supporting the heavens on his shoulders. He was the father of the Hesperides, prompting Hercules to enlist his help in retrieving the apples. However, Atlas, enjoying his temporary freedom, refused to resume his burden. Hercules, cunning as ever, deceived Atlas into assuming the celestial load once more, enabling him to abscond with the apples. Hercules' most renowned feat was his triumph over Antaeus. Antaeus, the son of Terra, Earth, stood as a formidable giant and warrior whose strength proved invincible as long as he maintained contact with his mother Earth. He compelled all foreign entrants to his realm to engage in combat with him, under the condition that defeat, like for all before them, meant certain death. Hercules confronted him, realizing that defeating him was futile, as he derived renewed vigor from every fall to the ground. Hercules resolved this by lifting him off the ground and strangling him in midair. The final labor we shall recount was the retrieval of Cerberus from the underworld. Hercules descended into Hades, accompanied by Hermes and Athena. Securing permission from Hades to transport Cerberus to the surface, provided he could accomplish this feat without resorting to weapons, Hercules, despite the monster's resistance, seized him, restrained him, and conveyed him to Eurystheus, before returning him to the depths. However, Hera's wrath persisted despite Hercules completing all twelve tasks, driving him once more into madness. He inadvertently slew his friend Iphitus and was sentenced to serve as Queen Omphile's slave for three years. During this period, the hero's demeanor seemed to transform, adopting a more feminine lifestyle, occasionally donning women's attire and spinning wool alongside Omphile's handmaidens, while the queen wore his lion's belt. Following the conclusion of his penance, he wed Deianira and enjoyed three years of tranquility with her. One fateful day, while traveling with his wife, they encountered a river, where the centaur Nessus ferried travelers for a fee. Hercules crossed the river unaided but entrusted Deianira to Nessus. However, Nessus attempted to abduct her, prompting Hercules to intervene, fatally wounding the centaur with an arrow in response to Deianira's cries for help. In his dying moments, Nessus bequeathed Deianira a vial of his blood, advising her to preserve it as a love charm for her husband. Deianira complied and soon found occasion to employ it. During one of Hercules' conquests, he captured a captivating woman named Aile, arousing more than Deianira's disapproval. When Hercules sought a white robe from his wife for a sacrificial ritual celebrating his victory, Deianira, seeing an opportunity to test the love spell, soaked the garment in Nessus' blood. Upon donning the robe, Hercules experienced excruciating agony as the poison seeped into his body, causing him immense torment. Despite his attempts to remove the robe, it adhered to his flesh, tearing away whole swathes of his skin. Witnessing the consequences of her actions, Deianira took her own life. Prepared to embrace his end, Hercules ascended Mount Eta, constructing a funeral pyre from trees, relinquishing his prized bow and arrows, and reclining on the pyre, his head resting on a club, with a lion's pelt draped over him. With a serene countenance, as if preparing for slumber, he instructed a follower to ignite the pyre. As the flames consumed him, the gods looked on, dismayed by the demise of Earth's champion. Zeus, however, assured them that Hercules, having conquered all else, would not succumb to the flames, as only the mortal aspect of him would perish. Zeus, therefore, bore him to the celestial realm, where he was welcomed among the stars. Hera, finally repentant for her actions, bestowed her daughter Hebe upon him in marriage. Discover the enchanting world of myths. Click subscribe to join our mythology channel on YouTube. 
unearth ancient legends, unravel mysteries, and embark on epic journeys through the realms of mythology. Don't miss out on a single tale, subscribe now and let the myths come alive on your screen. Chronicles of the Past